Welcome back everyone to week 6 top 10 dual wielding kills where no shields are allowed and you gotta have a weapon of some sort in each hand as shown right here in number 10 where this player is using dual greatswords which was actually the combination that was submitted to be the most which was quite interesting. Anyway he's using flame weapon and charcoal pine resin to get both of his weapons on fire and looking awesome. He's also power stancing so he clearly has a pretty high strength level. I gotta be honest I really love the way dual greatswords look and creativity was definitely a big part in this countdown as well as skill of course. So he ends the fight by horizontally smashing his opponent in half with both greatswords. Pretty badass. Alright let's move on to number 9. At number 9 we've got a dual spitfire spear combo on a chaos build that's all about fire, explosions and pyromancy. The spitfire spear is a guardian dragon boss soul weapon so it's quite rare because many people can't actually defeat the guardian dragon. He's also using acid surge, lingering flame and forbidden sun just to create as much confusion and overwhelm his opponent especially since they're in quite an enclosed space. Of course he's power stancing the spears and so he can poke with both at the same time. He's not doing insane damage with them but he is making use of the spear's range which is good. He's also demonstrated the special attack as both of the spears can shoot fireballs out the end which is awesome. All in all a great submission, very unique build and he ends up getting the win. At number 8 we have someone using a build very similar to what I currently use. He's got the Great Club in his main hand and the Powering Dagger in his offhand along with the Vengar's Armor set which looks pretty cool in my opinion. He's going for a more unlocked playstyle and is consistently popping off those Pancake R2s which is great and as such he's doing pretty heavy damage. So I reckon playing unlocked was a good choice, definitely the best way to go with a weapon like this but he hasn't really done anything special in terms of dual wielding yet. However he gets a nice parry with the dagger but instead of performing a repost he then pulls out a second club and just pounds him into the floor. <laughs> That's what you call style. Alright let's look at number 7. Number 7 has to be one of the best butterfly builds I've seen so far. Simply because along with the butterfly wings he's using two whips which look exactly like a butterfly's proboscis. You know the thing that looks like an antenna that comes out their face for feeding which is great but despite all that he's actually destroying this guy. Even though he's got a great sword with sunlight blade he actually sends him running. Don't underestimate the power of a butterfly, <laughs> literally ignores all his faith spells and just keeps beating him down, or should I say whipping him down. This was epic, actually quite inspiring and so creative. Congratulations, let's take a look at number 6. Things do start getting a little bit crazy here at number 6 where we have a dual giant warrior clubs build and yes he is power stancing them, which does mean he has 90 strength, <laughs> oh boy. His fat onion opponent is using fist weapons which are quite tough to beat with a strength weapon set up like this due to the risk of stun locks and he does take pretty heavy damage so it's a close fight however the damage output potential of this build more than makes up for it. It all comes down to the wire as he does a one handed special attack and just wins the damage trade right at the end taking the victory. That really was a sweet combo, I might have to try that out. Halfway down the countdown at number 5 it gets a bit sneaky as this person is using the two illusory rings, Ring of the Exalted and Ring of the Conqueror, which are two very rare rings that turn your right and left hand weapons invisible. He uses them to great effect, his opponent couldn't see his special attack with the curved dragon greatsword and he actually looks so intimidating like he's running towards you to punch your face in but <laughs> he finishes off the fight with a couple more hits. A clear undeniable victory, that was something different, so thanks for your submission. Number 4 is a much more traditional kind of build with a Nestock in the offhand and a Katana in the main hand. He's got a good balance of both unlocked and targeted play and this submission is focused more on skill rather than creativity. Nothing much happens in the first half of the fight but eventually he gets a really nice parry with the air stock and swaps out not just a weapon but a ring as well. Really cool move, clearly he has very quick fingers, so I slowed it down for you so you can actually get a better look at what he does, otherwise it's just too fast to see. Now although this is really impressive, I still feel we haven't really found the actual limit to the amount of things we can do and swap to in Dark Souls 2 yet. I still think there's a potential for much crazier things before a repost, but I suppose time will tell. Congratulations, let's look at number 3. Who needs staffs or catalysts to cast sorceries when we have swords that can do it? This player is using two blue flames buffed with great magic weapon and buffing them does actually increase the spell damage which is quite interesting. I really just love the way this build looks and the fact that you can just shoot off sorceries left and right without people expecting it because you don't even need to pull out a catalyst. 
Soul Greatsword also looks extra awesome because it's like an extension of the weapon and it just seems really hard to punish this build. Come too close and he'll be slicing you up at close range, run away and he'll fire off soul spears at you. His opponent is definitely not having an easy time. The build just looks so fun, a really good build for sorcerers, another one I just want to try out. Congratulations on taking the third spot and on defeating your opponent. Let's move on to number two. Number two, aside from having an unusual username, <laughs> has invaded with only one hit point of life left. Basically one hit will kill him, guaranteed. Whether or not this was due to a mistake or because he wanted to challenge himself, I guess we'll never know but it's a fantastic clip nonetheless. Basically he's using dual helix halberds which honestly are like the scariest looking weapons in the whole game. You do not want to be stabbed by this thing's critical sweet spot. The reason why this submission is so insane is because his opponent heals multiple times during the whole thing, whereas he has pretty much no health at all from the very start and cannot heal because he's an invader. He does have holy water urns because consumables have become so important in online matches. This whole fight is just so impressive, when you're at that low health everything becomes a hundred times more intense, and yet he doesn't seem to panic at all. The fight ends as his opponent tries to chug down that sunny D once again we get some holy water thrown in his face, how fitting. <laughs> awesome match, time for number one. So the number one submission features an offhand curved dragon greatsword with a main hand katana and this blue invader starts battling a host in the forest of fallen giants and he does a really excellent job of utilising the backstep mechanic to avoid his opponent's swings and rush in to deal his own damage. His opponent's using an ultra greatsword which he avoids by rolling behind him and getting a few hits in and then using the dragon greatsword's special attack to get his opponent as he runs away before finally pulling out the big guns and sniping the poor host with a great bow. There's a phrase that describes that fight, it's called complete annihilation. Good job on taking the first spot. Just watching everyone, I really hope you're inspired by some of these clips and that you try some of these cool setups out, I know I definitely will be. Please remember to leave a like rating and subscribe, next week is top 10 gag spanks so check out the description for all that info and links to the lovely contributors. Otherwise thanks a lot everyone, I will see you all later.